Hello everyone, welcome to Rosen Carter, do the J.O.B. It's Friday, Tag Team Day. Um, my pick this week, and I'll pick the Rougeau brothers. Um, they weren't someone on your top 20 tag teams list. No, they could have been though. There was, looking back, there's some teams that I should have put in. Like, I was right pissed off with myself, I forgot to put in Power and Glory. I also forgot to put in the Bushwhackers. So there was some teams that I should have put in. But it's fucking hard, isn't it? You, you ask me one day, yeah. then you ask me the next. That's why I bottled it. Like, you know, because I was going to do the, the, the top 20 wrestlers and the top 20 teams, weren't I, that you and Robin were doing. And I just fucking bottled it. I couldn't do it. It's impossible, isn't it? That's it's one impossible. of the things. Yeah. It depends like, on the, the mood you're in as well, doesn't it? Sometimes, yeah. you know, so, yeah, it's a difficult one. But, you know. So, um, so but I do like the Rougeos, though. Like, the, you know, I do. They, the, the, on another day, they could have made it in there, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, so the Rougeau brothers debuted in the late 70s in Canada and primarily potted about there. Like, we're focusing on them as a team, but Jacques did a lot of stuff on his own. He went to Memphis and Continental, I think, and various different other places. But as a team, they were in Canada. And then 86 to 90, they were in the WWF. Uh, faces first, then heels. Ray retired due to back pain, but returned for both French and US commentary. And then Jacques is the Mountie and the Quebecer and yada yada. I went to WCW with um, the man that's PCO now, isn't it? Uh, uh, Pierre. Yeah, yeah. Uh, WCW was the major French Canadians. Uh, they both did Puerto Rico in 1990 as well. I found that out not through Wikipedia, but just through the um matches that I found on YouTube. I didn't watch any, but they were uh, they were in Puerto Rico in '90, so it must have been just after the WWF thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we watched four each. Where was your first, mate? My first one was uh, from Canada, it was uh, Montreal. I'm assuming, and it was, like, oh yeah, it popped up. It was from the 30th of September, 85, my first one. So, um, yeah, and it was against Frenchie Martin and Pierre Lefebvre or something along them fucking lines. It was a difficult one. Pierre, someone or the other, but he looked very similar to Frenchie Martin. So I'm assuming they were a fucking like a uh, established tag Thanks team. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. um, right. Yeah. I'll run you through the fucking, there's a lot of shit to go through on this one. Some, some really, really good and some fucking head scratching stuff. Like, um, <laughs> first of all, I don't know if your first matches are in Montreal. Are they from that area? Your first one? Went straight to WF. Right, okay. So you might be able to answer this question or you might be as fucking dumbfounded as I am. But why the fuck is there two referees in the ring? Like, bizarre as fuck. And... You know, in Mexico. My, 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 my second match is also from Montreal and there's two refs in there as well. So it's not like a one-time thing. It's like a a proper thing and it throws me the fuck off because they're counting but uh, they're both counting like pins but their fucking counts are, are like not in sync with each other <laughs> so it's like <laughs> so if yeah, I'm so you've, only, you've only won with one referee you are <laughs> you could have only a one with one referee you kicked out well, of the other fuck <laughs> that's the thing it's like one's counting and if I'm count, if I'm on the fucking mat kicking out, I wouldn't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, because it might only be a one count, but I'm thinking it's a fucking two because I'm hearing two fucking yeah. hands. You know, so I don't know what that's about. Can totally fucking threw me off. Um, there's people talking over the match, so it's not like live commentary. Um, I don't know who's talking, but um, it's also it's highlights as well like because during the commentary that they're, they're saying that the match was over like 30 minutes long and it was only about uh, maybe 14 15 minutes so it has chopped it up quite a bit but um right let's see i'll just run through it so there's a jump start by uh the heels 
they jump start, they throw the uh, Rougeos out the ring. And then literally from that, it's kind of funny because they get thrown out and within a second they're back in. So it's like they didn't take no damage. They literally come back in, get on the heels and throw the heels out. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a fucking payback situation straight away. Um, Jacques, there's some good spots in the match. Uh, there's Jacques shining at the start. And um, I think it's, yeah, Jacques shining. He gets Ray in and Ray does like a fucking raised on top and then Jacques comes in and goes on all fours behind one of the hills and he does a cross body over, you know what I mean? As fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah that was a nice little spot. And there's a really cool spot as well, like a little bit later on. And it's with, uh, where they're doing the old fucking, where are we? Yeah. So Jacques is doing a crisscross with one of the hills, you know, the whole boom, 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 boom. But, and I've never seen this spot before. So as they're doing the crisscross, the heel's going one way, fucking Jock's going the other. Jock's hit, Jock hits the ropes, but gets a blind tag on Ray as he's doing the crisscross. You know what I mean? So as they're doing the crisscross, he tags Ray. The heel obviously don't see. The heel carries on running. Jock stops at the other end of the ring as fucking Ray comes in, sleeps. Obviously, the heel's th- thinking it's the same fucking Rougeau. So he sleeps and just runs into a fucking drop kick by Ray. It's fucking beautiful oh. how they've done it. Yeah, the, the timing was like fucking spot on. Um, where we got it? Um, oh, yeah, there is a fucking. This is a head scratcher here, this one here, right? So, right, the two referees, like, I can understand having the two referees in certain matches, like a battle royal, whatever you want the fucking the cases. But anyway, so there's a point during the heat where they throw uh, Doc to the outside. So, the other heel can give him some fucking boots and, you know, the old fucking heel work. So as that's happening, like, in in if there's only one referee, the fucking referee would be getting the heel back that's in the ring to yeah. allow the other heel fucking him up on the outside. So what do they do when there's two referees? Both fucking referees are there getting him back, telling him <laughs> to stop. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> instead of one of them, like, oi, what are you doing out there? Like, they've literally both got their backs turned. It looks fucking daft. I, I, I don't know the reasoning behind it. I don't know if it was a Montreal thing because I ain't really watched like any wrestling from Montreal. I've never seen it before. I've seen, you know, bits of their TV and I've got the video, that Abdullah video we spoke about, but yeah. I've, not seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it in the AAA in Mexico. Right. Two referees thing. I don't quite understand how it works, but, you know, oh, that's yeah. a weird place there. But no, I've, not I've never seen it, I don't think. I've never, I've seen bits of Montreal from here and there, but never ever seen that before. But it's just funny how my first two matches, they've both got it. So I don't know if it was there for a period of time because I don't know what, uh, I don't know the date of my next match, but I'm guessing it's around about the same time. But yeah, that was a fucking bizarre one. You know, really weird. Even, in fact, even uh, the people that are doing the voiceovers, like talking about the match, actually bring that up as well. Like after I'd written it down and they're like, yeah, they even talk about the fucking, it's weird how both refs have got their, you know, and if they're fucking saying it, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, a bit fucked up. But anyway, um, so yeah, where are we now? So to... Uh, Oh, I have put it as bizarre as fuck. I was a bit confused by that point. But um, then there's a a sleeper hold by Jacques uh, on one of the heels. Um, Ray gets fucking lifted up. So Ray's illegal gets lifted up and crotched on the top rope, goes out, but the refs don't see it. Do they do like the over the top rope here and like rule or not? I don't know, to be fair. Possible. A lot of those um, you know, promotions at that time did, didn't they? Mm, so I don't know, like, because the ref didn't see that. So the announcers are saying, like, oh, the referee didn't see. I don't know if they're on about didn't see, like, the illegal fucking move or didn't see him throw him over the top. Either way, the ref didn't see anything. And then um, the and then the referee's, like, eyes are on the action and there's a low blow by Jacques, like, the face uh, on one of the heels and the ref sees that and, like, disqualifies him. And they give another low blow to the other heel. And yeah, it's all like they basically get DQ'd against Frenchie Martin and his partner. But the match itself, I thought was all right. Like 
well, I thought it was really good, the match, like really good spots, but the two referees thing fucking befuddled me, like really fucking made me think like even I've tried to fucking understand why like it's done, you know, but I can't just, I just can't think of what the fuck the reasons behind it is like, you know, but yeah, that was uh, my first match anyway. So, so, French, Frenchy Martin was, you know, I've seen him mainly in WBF. Yeah. Some of that IWA, you know, that IWA that, you know, Eric the Red and the fucking, you know, all that shit. He was on some of those. Mm. He was consistently good in the WBF. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's where I knew him from mainly. And that's where I'm going for my first WBF. Mm-hmm. February the 6th, 88. Uh, versus Barry Horowitz and the Brooklyn Brawler. Well, Steve Lombardi before his Brooklyn Brawler from the Boston Garden. Um, hey, up! I think I've done that match, um, oh, yeah. but I've, I haven't got a date on it. But it is against Lombardi and the Hor- and Horowitz. So, but that's my last match. though. that is that's match four for me. Right, fuck, fuck when you say you've got ATA. Was he Brawler? No, he was Lombardi. Oh, there we go then. Um, oh, we'll do that. We'll do that, that fucking together as one, then, shall we? We'll do that together as one. We'll fucking have a glimpse through now. Yeah, Craig George and Lord Alfred doing a commentary. Um, who's that? Sorry, Craig de George and Lord Alfred were commentating. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if it is the same one as me. Hang on. Um, I'll tell you what, Guan, you tell me if it's the same. It started it... with a double top wrist lock on Jacques. And then Ray comes in and fucking... Ray comes in and pushes him over, which is amazing. And he goes yeah, over the... You fucking... know, normally, they, they do the pull, don't they? And sort of bring him round themselves. Yeah, Ray yeah. Goes over him. It was brilliant. I've never seen anything like that before. I thought it was really cool. Um, yeah, so this is like the first Rougeau's that I'd watched in a while, right? Right, and I thought, as as a face team, they were really fucking deliberate, weren't they? Like a lot of the baby face teams at the time were a bit flashy and fucking, you know. The rockers were sort of girls and glitz and glamour, you know. The killer bees were the high flyers, you know that kind of shit. When these were like a fucking deliberate, quite brutal looking fucking baby face team, weren't they? They were, and like I've wrote more than once here as well like fucking Raymond's drop kicks look like it, he fucking stiff as fuck there's no way you can do that drop kick on someone without them feeling that fucker fucking deliberate there was nothing that didn't like there was no wasted motion in anything they did no um, yeah Jacques likes this I saw it in, a, in several if not all of the matches to be fair at one point, Brawler had his back lowered like he was going to do the backdrop, and then Jacques does the little fucking flip over where he yeah, puts yeah. his back. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, cut off from Barry, and then Baz and the Brawler. A fucking good team, aren't they? Barry and the Brawler in this. Mm. Yeah. So like, excuse me. You'd, you'd believe that they were, you know, a, a regular team. Mm. Um, did they tag often at all, or they must have? I'd have thought. I suppose during this period, it was the same show every fucking day, wasn't it? So they would have done for the month anyway, or whatever, wouldn't it? Because they were long trips, weren't they? But I put you can tell this wasn't for TV. This would have, you know, this would have just been. I think it was Prism TV, wasn't it? In Boston, they showed the Boston Garden shows on. Could yeah. you know what? TV's normally fucking... If this match was on TV, it'll be fucking three minutes. Whereas this was like 12 or whatever, you know? Yeah, I mean? it was about 12. I thought it was, it was longer than I thought it was going to be, actually, this match. Yeah, it gave... It's... People that are worth it, like fucking Horowitz and the Brawler, deserve that time, don't they? Mm-hmm. Um, Brawler with a small package to Ray at one point, and he just kind of Ray kind of just flips him over, which is pretty cool as well. Like, so he's got him in a small package. That's quite different, isn't it? Mm. Uh, there's the ad- abdominal stretch thing that Barry had on using the ropes. I always find that fucking brilliant because it's such a fucking yeah. easy thing to do. Um, 
but oh, oh, put uh, Barry Horowitz with his right subtle heel. Do you know what I mean? Like little fucking taps, but you notice them. Do you know what I mean? Like fucking at one point he just fucking rakes his bootlaces across his face. But you know, like when Arn Anderson does it, he's proper fucking deliberate and boom. And Barry's just like boom, I have that you twat. You know what I mean? <laughs> And and the thing that he does with the elbow, he just has him in the elbow, and then pops his 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 hand, so his elbow goes in. Oh, yeah, yeah. A little thing really cool. Um, it seems like the referee wants to go home off, but because he's counting fucking like fifteen to the dozen here, he wants he's like fucking bang bang bang. He wants to. Go. I don't know who the referee was, but he wants to fucking. He, he must have left his fucking toaster on or something. He wants to go home. Um, <laughs> Brawler was flared off. Hot tag to Ray, and Ray looks stiff as fuck. I thought Ray looked stiff. Yeah, um, <laughs> and the finish was up like a heart attack, and then Jacques comes off with the legs in the corner. Yeah, never, yeah. as far as I know, but they did it quite a bit. But I don't, I don't know if it ever had a name. No, I don't know if it did, to be honest. But it's a decent move. It looks good. Yeah, Jacques ends up in like like Doink's whoopee cushion in the finish, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah, it was enjoyable. Yeah, I thought it was a decent match. To be honest, it was all right. Mm. But that fucking well, spot with the double wrist lock thing was beautiful. I'd never seen it. Like, I've seen it done without the assistance from the it other was like guy. A cat flap. It reminded me of a cat flap. You know, like <laughs> Ray was the cat and it was meant to the fucking cat flap. The door went whoop. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that, that, that was Barry and, uh, and Brawler. Uh, so that was your first match? That was my first match, yeah. I, I only did double the match, you see. All right, yeah. So, um, what what year was that from? Eighty eight. All right, February, February the sixth. It was on YouTube twice, so you might watch the other version without the date. Yeah, because I couldn't find the date for it. But um, anyway, yeah, that's my fourth one. So that was your first. So, shall we do my second one now? Yeah, do your second one. Yeah. Okay, my second one is also from uh, Montreal. And it's uh, in foreign, um, whereas the last one was talking over it in English. But this is like, yeah, uh, this is in foreign. And it's with a, it's a loser leaves town match against Ronnie Garvin and Jimmy Garvin. Okay. So the two Garvins are not, like, connected. But, yeah, that's who it was against. They are obviously connected, aren't they? Because didn't Ronnie Garvin marry Jimmy Garvin's mother? I've no idea, to be fair. I couldn't tell you. I might have totally fucking dreamt that, but <laughs> if, if, I, if I could Google on my phone while I'm on my phone, I would, but I'll I'll let you know. Right, okay. I'm sure that was the case. <laughs> they were like, I'm sure, like, Ronnie was Jimmy's fucking stepdad. Right. How fucking was, what was the age gap between them? I mean, it wasn't no, a lot. Couldn't have been much, could it? No. Well, <laughs> anyway, so two refs again. Fucking, I don't know why. But yeah, um, Ron, Ron and Jacques start with a fucking slugfest. It's quite, it's pretty good, actually. They're literally just fucking squaring off, fucking pow, pow, fucking popping each other as fucking hard as they can. I'm thinking, oh, fucking hell. Then all of a sudden, in the middle of this slugfest, a drop kick from Jacques right on the fucking schnoz. It looked beautiful. Bam, like out of nowhere, just fucking boom. Fucking Garvin's like fucking selling is brilliant. And uh, the fucking crowd just go wild, literally. First fucking big thing in the match and the crowd explode. Um, what we got here, there's a bit where Jimmy's got fucking Jacques on the apron, ducks as fucking uh, Ron goes to nail him, pops. Pops Jimmy off the apron, massive pop from the crowd. Like these Montreal people are fucking wild. Like literally, you know, Rouges are obviously like legends, aren't they? Fucking heroes. So, I mean, fucking Jacques beat fucking Hogan in Montreal, didn't he? Did he? Yeah. It's uh, there's a clip. I don't think the whole match is on YouTube, but there's a like a camcorder clip from WCW. Yeah. Jacques oh, brought, yeah. a, you know, basically brought a WCW show in, and right. during the Hollywood Hogan thing. And, um, yeah, put fucking Jock over. All right. Pretty big, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a point here where fucking Ron Garvin is in with Ray and 
they're having a bit of a slugfest the way fucking Ron Garvin and Jacques did earlier, but not for as long. And Ray's getting the better of him. And I'm, I'm not sure if uh, if this is a fuck up or if it's a spot that looks really good by accident. So like fucking uh, Ray's nailing Ron and Ron's against the ropes, like literally now because Ray's got the better of him. So Ronnie Garvin goes to fucking like nail him back. But he's against the ropes and he ends up fucking, as he's going to punch him or line him or whatever, he literally arm comes under the top rope and the fucking rope stops his arm from like, you know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> but like, I'm not, I'm not sure if it was meant, but it looked really good. And Ron's selling the fuck out of it. So like, I don't know if he realized it was a fuck up and he's like, oh, I better react to that. Or did he just look like a right cunt? So um, it was quite. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was a really good spot. I just don't know if it was deliberate or not, but they made it work. And Ronnie, Ron Garvin was selling it like fucking anything. So that was pretty funny and really good. Um, they go for heat on Ray, um, but like I said earlier, Ron Ronnie Garvin's selling is fucking brilliant throughout this. Like, and the crowd, like I say, are reacting to everything. They're so like literally anything they're doing, the crowd are just popping for it all. Like, um, there's a few little comebacks from Ray. Um, I noticed that, like, I don't know if you ever noticed this, but both Rougeos, I don't know if it's fucking me, but I always, like, I thought this in uh, Jacques Mounties days as well. Like, they bump a lot on their asses. Like, I've noticed a lot of that, yeah. like, a lot. A lot I've of things- written in one of the other matches that Jacques hates to bump, but gets fucking backdrop PG. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't get it. Like he, he won't take it just a bump off a fucking washing line, but gets backdropped like eight foot and fucking bumps like a fucking like like you know a cruiserweight. Yeah, Buddy funny. Landau was the same. I watched Buddy Landau and um, Brian Pillman yesterday night, right. and and fucking Pillman's nailing it with his shit, and he's bumping fucking worse than me. Yeah, he gets back dropped and lands fucking like the best bump anyone can ever take. Crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, I always noticed Jock used to bump that, but in watching these matches, I noticed Ray did as well. Like just from just just normal bumps. It could be like a clothesline or a fucking drop kick, and they're just they just like even um I noticed Ray doing it on just a shoulder tackle that like doing it in a national spot or something and fucking takes the tackle. But goes down on his fucking ass like it's it's almost like a lazy bump, but surely it's fucking more more painful. There's a lot of arms and legs on a bump as well. Like when he'd get fucking, I remember the boss man matches, and he'd get yeah. fucking wild and he'd be like, wow, and the fucking bump will be like up in the air and fucking, you know, like like a tortoise when you turn him over. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what else we got? Yeah. Uh, bumps. Um. Hang on. Uh, yeah, there's a fucking... Ron's got... Where are we? Yeah, Ron's got Ray somehow. Um, hang on, yeah. Jock comes off the top, but there's no DQ. That's it. He's got fucking... He's got... Yeah, he's got Ray Rougeau in a fucking hold. I can't, I've just put he's got him in a hold. I can't remember what hold he is. So Ron Garvin's got Ray in the hold. And like Jacques comes off the top rope and fucking, it's kind of weird. Like he comes off the top rope to break the hold. It might be a sleeper or something. I can't remember. And then I like, fucking, so Jacques comes off the top, plonk, fucking knocks him down. Then Jacques gets out and then that's the fucking hot tag. So it's like. <laughs> 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 he was in he came in to like fucking to cause the double down then get back out the ring for the hot tag and then he gets fucking <laughs> tagged into the hot tag so <laughs> but there's no dq anywhere um <laughs> the, the finish was actually pretty decent even though i fucking hate this two ref malarkey but um ron ronnie garvin's in the corner getting fucking nailed he just does a like he does a double leg sweep and then feet on the ropes on Jacques for the three count. But um, I guess one of the referees said to like the other ref, like, you know, his feet was on the ropes. So like they're celebrating. Fucking crowd are going wild. Loser leaves town and the Rougeos have lost. But then 
He's like, nah, I don't think so. Fucking feet on the ropes, whatever. And then out of nowhere, both Rougeau's fucking waist lock roll up on both heels. One, two, three. So they both get pinned. So it was a decent little finish there. But yeah, the two refs still ain't fucking, I'm not buying that at all, to be honest. But yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll look that up. I did see the Garvey matches on there. So I'll, I'll have a look there. Yeah. But no, it was a decent uh, match, you know. But yeah. God. Um, my next one then, 6th of October, 88. So, they're heels now. The last one was February, I think. So, right. we're a few months on, and they're now heels. Yeah. With Jimmy Hart, the little flags and all that shit. Oh, Against yeah. the Rockers. This is the first of two Rockers matches that I've done. Um, a shorter one, like a, like a TV one. It's only like five or six minutes. It's all right, like. I like both themes, and I think I was expecting more from this one. But it's 88, I suppose. They're both kind of... The Rougeos are new to being heels, and the Rockers are new to being there, so I suppose they're just kind of establishing themselves a little more, aren't they? Um, proper fresh-looking fucking Rockers team. French commentary on it, so it's like French WBF TV. Uh, Ray and Marty start with Ray offering the handshake you know, all that kind of shit, you know, bring the hand to the floor, stampy. Uh, then, then all of a sudden, like, fresh out the fucking blue, there's 47 people, like, all four are in the ring, then it's fucking kicking off, blah, blah, blah. There's a little cut, like, like a little shine. Uh, Jacques tags, backflip, does the backflip thing into the ring, which is, they're really fucking good at, aren't they? They're quite agile, these fucking Rougeos. Um, Jacques shows off for a bit to Marty and fucking, you know, like doing fucking his back flippy thing over the rope and all that kind of shit. Marty rolls him up. Um, Jacques shits himself, runs to the corner, does the fucking hug thing. Um, then there's a shitload of arm stuff from Jacques on Marty. Sean's in. That, this is where I said Jacques hates to bump. So it was where I first saw this. Um, shitload of arm stuff for like, you know, four minutes. Um, until Ray trips Sean off the ropes. He, he's on the floor and trips him. Bosh. The heat's on then. There's a great spot where Jacques pushes Sean back first into the um, into Ray's fucking kidney shot, which is fucking right simple, but, you know... Something you don't see often. It's the simple things that I really enjoy because it's simple things that you don't see a lot. And That's then the you thing. Go, oh, fuck me. You know, yeah. I, I really like that. Um, there's a long chin lock that um, Sean fights out. The other Rougeau distracts the ref and there's a blind tag. Fucking bosh, load of heat there. Um, Sean Salin in this is really fucking good. Like, Sean is... Sean is he's not far off fucking Ricky Morton selling here. Um Rujo smooth as silk as a team. Uh Ray drops his head. Sean kicks it, you know, in a in a backdrop style fucking kick, hot tag. In comes Marty and Ray. Only Marty and Ray in the, after the hot tag. Marty pops Jacques off the apron. Marty does the 10 heads in the corner, calls in Jacques. The referee puts Jacques, like, fucking, no, oh, fuck you, Jacques, that kind of shit. Jacques comes in, the referee's putting Jacques out. Sean does the 10 heads outside, from outside the ring on the, on the apron, which I thought was really cool. So Marty's doing it first in the ring, and mm. then he's like, fuck you, Jacques. Jacques comes in, referee comes in, and then Sean's got him on outside the ring doing the 10 heads. Right, okay. But, you know, with Jock still in, with Ray still in the ring, if you know what I mean. So that was really yeah. cool. Um, Marty comes off the top um, with some fucking thing. It looks like it's all over. In comes Jock with the megaphone from Jimmy Hart, and the referee catches him, and they get DQ'd. It was that simple. The all finish right. was. There was no, you know, intricate fucking, you've got the megaphone, or there's a throw of the megaphone, or fucking distraction or nothing it was you've got the megaphone you're disqualified i thought it was quite odd odd for the finish but 
sometimes you just got to do that shit, and you, you know, you get caught, you get disqualified. But yeah, yeah, it was all right. But you, there's you another Rockets match. That, do. But the whole thing with the getting caught, like you don't often see it. Like you, you know, like there was that. Um, I can't remember what match it was. Now it was, I think it was a singles. Who I can't remember. What, it was a little while ago now where they were doing that fucking the thing when he suplexes him in the ring and the manager or the tag partner's outside and he's grabbing the ankle, you know, like Rude and Warrior. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah, and like the referee seen him do it and disqualified him. And it's like, you don't really see that. You know, it's a good, it's good to get disqualified. Because like it? it establishes we've got rules. And yeah. It establishes that the cheats don't always get away with it. You know, if, if they're part of a big angle or stuff, it's good to get away with it, isn't it? Obviously. Um. That this was just a match that they got caught in. So, yeah. Um, yeah. There's a better Rockers match this layer that is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> Still, okay. like, after seeing that, it's top five tag matches of all time ever. Yeah. What you got now? All right. Um, You've only got one more, yeah? You are. You are. You've only got one more because we kind of did yeah, the, yeah. the... Okay. Just one more. Yeah, but just quickly as well. That's another reason I didn't like that fucking two refs thing because you can't really fucking cheat if you got yeah. you know you know if you got two refs there like even though they fucking did because both of them were on the fucking legal guy but still technically you couldn't can't really cheat can you which kind yeah. of fucks up the whole point but you know but anyway yeah my my third match which is like my last one because we've done the fourth is against the Conquistadors from December eighty seven. And this was actually my favourite one of the four, which is quite funny because who was it that we'd done recently? Uh, the Killer Bees. And it was probably Conquistadors. It was my favourite match out of that four as well. So, you know. And, you're, and Conquistadors aren't in your top 20 tag list. That, they need to be fucking top if, four now. <laughs> <laughs> They've definitely moved up after the past couple of weeks or ca- past few weeks, whatever. Yeah, so um, this, this match was fucking brilliant. Um, Right, so uh, Ray shines on both at the start, um, and just ending in arm drags on both the conquistadors. Fucking uh, Jacques comes in. There's a great spot where I, I, you might have seen it. I think they might have done it in the Horowitz match. I'm not sure actually, but I think they've done it in two matches of mine. And um, you know the the old reverse monkey flip where Jacques like. They're running from behind and he's on his ass and he puts his feet up. So it's like a monkey flip, but they're coming from behind him instead of the front. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. they're lying down. Yeah, off, yeah. Off the road, lying down, yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Um, so but he does it, so he does it on one of them f- coming from behind, and then the other fucking conquistador runs in and he quickly gets back down on his ass and fucking does it on him as well. So he does like two in a row, which is a pretty I cool. I like it when the villains try it. And then they go down to do it, and they just get fucking stomped in the ear. Well, that's exactly what happened <laughs> like right, in yeah. this match. Yeah, yeah, right on the fucking noggin. Um, great spot. There's oh yeah, do, same again. Um, now there's a fucking there's an absolute beautiful spot here. You'll fucking like this one, fucking especially for 1987. So Jacques fucking tied up in the ropes. Um. And as he's tied up in the ropes, one of them, one of the conquistadors just runs and gives him like a fucking crossbody, like, you know, as he's in the ropes, which looked pretty fucking stiff. <laughs> as he <laughs> as he done it, fucking Ray comes in, drop kicks the guy that's just done the crossbody back ahead. And legit, probably the stiffest looking drop kick I've ever seen in my life. And it was to, it's to his fucking back of his head as well. So that couldn't have been much fun. Um, now, I don't know. If the conquistadors fucking swapped or anything at this point, because if the guy that just been nailed in the back of the head, I'm surprised he was still fucking conscious. To be fair, but um, so anyway, one of them, it might be the guy that just been drop kicked. I don't know, but one of the conquistadors is outside on the floor. Now one of them's in the ring. It could be the guy that's just been drop kicked. I don't know, but anyway, Jacques still tied up in the ropes, so he's already taken the one crossbody. You know, in, in as he's been tied up. So now if you can picture this, this was fucking brilliant. So the conquistador runs towards Jacques to give him another crossbody. As he's like literally in midair, Jacques fucking untangles himself and drops down. 
Conquistador flies over the fucking top ropes, cross bodies his fucking partner on the outside. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking brilliant spot. I've never seen it before in my life. It was fucking beautiful. I like if that was done today, right, that would get shit on, wouldn't it? Because it was just, it was just like fucking cross body off over the rope. And fuck yeah. All. <laughs> but um, it was, yeah, it was a right good spot. Um, they do some uh, teamwork on the leg of one of the uh, conquistadors. Um, there's a pretty cool spot here, actually. Ray's, <clears throat> Ray's got him in the, you know, like the fucking foot, what's it called? Like just like a foot lock type thing, like a fucking toe like and ankle kind of thing. That's the fucker, yeah. So, anyways, Ray's doing that on him, fucking just stretching that. As he's doing it, fucking, it's kind of funny because the heels here, obviously. I mean, sorry, the faces here. So, as they're doing it, they're basically doing a heel fucking like false tag situation. So, mm. he's got uh, the conquistador by the foot, by, by the ankle. Ray comes in, and then they get the tag. So, like, the, the faces, like, get... I'm sorry, the heels get the tag. And it, so it's like a role reversal type thing. So the referee's trying to fucking get the other conquistador out. As he's getting the conquistador out, fucking Ray drags the con the other conquistador in the ring. Jacques, Jacques comes in, and well, Jacques's in already, and they just switch, like, switch fucking, you know, positions. So now Jacques's got the foot lock on. And he's not legal kind of thing, you know what I mean? So total heel move, but the fans are loving it. Like, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um where are we now? There's just a fucking uh switch on. There's a little eye rake from one of the conquistadors, gets the tag, the new conquistador comes in and boom, back on his leg. So it's literally like fucking same thing, but just on the other conquistador. Um he on Jacques. Uh, yeah, there's heat, heat on Jacques now and fucking what? Okay. Yeah, one of the conquistadors misses the uh, second rope splash. And I thought that was going to go into the hot tag, but it didn't at all. I was like fucking, uh, I was writing it down, hot tag coming now. And then <laughs> it was just a fucking, it kind of threw me off a little bit, to be fair. I was like, I could see the match happening and it didn't go the way I thought it was going to. but. The hot tag came not long after with a back suplex. Fucking uh, tags in Ray and they do the old fucking, the old Quebecers finish, you know, like the flip. He's got the hands mm. and he flips and like yeah. lands on it. Looks fucking stiff, that does fucking hell. But yeah, that's the finish of it. It was a really good match though. Right, great match, yeah. Sorted. Mm. Um, I always like the Conquistadors, can't go wrong. Oh, brilliant. Uh, what? Brilliant. My third one, I took a very brief look at WrestleMania 5, 1989, obviously, the Bushwhackers. Um, I watched it for one reason, and it's the fucking... I, I don't know if it's just me that sees this, but it's the little bollock rub that Luke gives Jacques on the body slam. Brilliant. There is just a <laughs> clip of that on YouTube, and it's fucking one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Stuck with me since I was a kid. Um <laughs> <laughs> Starts with the Bushwhackers taking uh, Jimmy Hart's jacket off in the middle of the ring, like Rougeau's jump on Bish Bash Bosh. Uh, they're, they're in the co opposite corners. Fucking Jimmy's now got his jacket back, putting it on in the middle of the ring. Fucking double Irish whipping. The fucking Rougeau's going to Jimmy Hart. The fucking jacket goes flying. That's it's brilliant. Cool. <laughs> um, Luke and Ray start. Oh, fuck me, this starts pretty fucking, you know, there's sleeping and leaping going on, which you don't expect from the Bushwhackers, to be fair. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, all that shit's going on. Jacques shown, he's got about a, a, a lace out of his boot. The ref goes, oh, you're fucking lace. So Luke's like stopped and then Ray runs in and jumps him. There's a little heat. Fucking hell of a post in. Luke goes into the corner, fucking proper, off his feet. Doing. I was inspired by this because I was talking to Luke on um, Messenger. Like, really odd because Kay said, oh, you ain't spoke to fucking Luke for a while. And then, bing, all, he like, a couple of seconds later, he appears on fucking, on, on Messenger, like. Um, hell of a post in, boing. Uh, then there's the slam. And you've got to fucking see it. 
<laughs> Jacques picks him up and Slam just and, and Luke just rubs his bollocks. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> Ray off the ropes into the back. Uh, Gorilla and Jesse talk about um, who Luke and Butch are, which you know, like which one's Luke and which one's Butch, and he's like Luke's the one. You know, Luke ain't got no teeth, is what Jesse says, and that's stuck in me head ever since because I wouldn't never fucking remember which one's which either. But Luke ain't got no teeth. He's stuck in me head. Uh, the abdominal stretch thing. Um, all of a sudden, like, they're doing the abdominal stretch. Then they leave. They let the abdominal stretch. Fucking Luke Salin. Rougeau's a hugging. In comes Butch. Fucking battering ram. Double knee. Home. It's that easy. There's no fucking hot tag. No build. No nothing. But this is WrestleMania 5, which would have had, like, three or fucking possibly four tag matches. So... You, you don't want to see the fucking hot tag and shit in every match, do you? Yeah. Um, did exactly what it said on the tin. It was something that was needed at WrestleMania 5. A bit of, a bit of fucking light art in this as well, you know? So, yeah, yeah. it was sound. But it, this is a fucking main event now. We're in the main event now. <laughs> 10th of October, 1989. WWF's first tour of the United Kingdom. We're coming to you from London. The London Arena. Um... It's is shown on, on Sky. Is this on one of the UK Rampage things? Or no. World no. Tour. Um, the World Tour had the match with from Paris, I believe. Right, because I've World seen Tour that video. maybe two or three times, and I thought that was phenomenal. Like the one that I remember. This, this, uh, I've, I've, this, this actual thing was shown on Sky. Um, right. I didn't have Sky back then, and to be fair, I probably wouldn't have even fucking known about it. But um, somebody made it me on a disc. Right. So I've got the whole show on a disc, which is really fucking good. The cast of Heidi Hire there, so like Sue Pollard and fucking all that shit. They're <laughs> there. Um, oh, and Chris Tarrant, he's there as well. Um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a good show. Like Coco and Boris. Brett and Dino Bravo, Hogan and Savage. I remember them. I believe. Um, Some of them are on the World Tour 8990 video. The Coco, the Coco one. Who was he on with? Say Coco and Chris. I've seen that one. Is that on that? What's that Uh, on? I don't know. I don't know. Brawler and Roma. Right. Um, yeah, cracking show though, all in all. Um, yeah, I found it on Daily Motion. It wasn't on YouTube. I found it on Daily Motion. Right, okay. So, rockers come in, fucking boom, boom. Uh, in literally, the second the rockers are in, double super kick, out go the Rougeos. Uh, Lord Alfred and Tony Schiavone on the commentary. Hebner's got a cast on, on his arm. Right, OK. Um, right, now, it takes a while to start, because there's a load, like, it's not a fucking TV show, is it? It's it, like, so they're, they're getting house show heat, you know what I mean? So Jacques shows off, shows off with a nip-up. Marty does the same. Jacques rolls over the ropes, like, vaults over. Mm-hmm. Marty he replies with the same thing fucking the British crowd are always hot anyway aren't they um Sean in he goes up to the top rope does a backflip Jacques tries it goes up fucking bottles it get back down again <laughs> he tries it again fucking Jeanette t- like pings the top rope he crotches himself fucking brilliant this, like, this to me is wrestling like fuck the wrestling bit like, this is heat right um Sean in with the ten heads. Rockers with a load of heat on Jacques. Jacques crawls to the corner uh, to get Ray in. There's a load of fucking sleep leaps and fucking elbows. Oh, sleep. Oh, here we go. They do this thing where so there's like sleep and fucking sleep and an elbow and then a sleep, sleep and move. Like, I've written it, sleep, sleep, elbow, sleep, sleep, move, but I don't know who's doing what, to be fair. But, obviously, fucking, the 
Perugio gets misses an elbow, you know, long and short of it. Uh, I've written hot crowd in big letters. They're fucking buying everything. Um, there's a shitload of leg stuff, and then there's a blind tag from the Rockers doing that fucking toe and ankle. So it's right. similar to what you said before, toe yeah. and ankle, fucking refs with the other one, switch. So simple, so heat filled. Um, Sean and Marty swap, and I've written Sean and Marty swap and line perfect. It's just fucking so easy. They're doing nothing, not moving a fucking inch, just got toe and ankle on. You know, refs with the villain swap. It's it's come up in it because they know the villains are going to cheat at some point or another. Because back then you knew when the vi- you knew who the villains were and you knew who the faces were. So you know there was going to be some bad shit going on at some point. It hadn't happened yet, but it was going to happen at some point. Um, Ray pushes Sean off the leg, um, <clears throat> and then Jacques with a boot in the back. So it wasn't like your standard fucking into the ropes. It was like off the toe and ankle. Uh, mm. Then the heel shit's on now. Uh, oh, the Rougeos like to do this Boston Crab, and then the other one comes in with a knee to the back. That's pretty cool. Um, one Rougeau slams Sean into the other Rougeau's knee, which is cool as well. Abdominal stretch with the extra pull from uh, Jacques with the abdominal stretch, extra pull from Ray. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I put the timing of both teams is perfect. The referee knows exactly where to be. Uh, he always know just how much heat to do. You know, during the fucking, you see it a lot on sort of shows of our standard. You know where there's the the tags, and he always are doing the cheating. Sometimes they cheat just a little bit too much. Yeah. Like and and but they know these know exactly how much to do without milking the fuck out of it to not get caught. Mm. It's fucking brilliant. Um, I think that's something that that we've mastered to a degree, that we know how much cheating to do and how much fucking baby facing to do. Do you know what I mean? I also also feel like if you you cheat too much, like literally like too much, you end up kind of making the ref look a dick. Like, you know, because there's only so much you can do. If you're literally 90% of the match is like cheating, the referee's going to look like a right more. And basically, he's going to get all the heat rather than the heels. Because if it, it's sly and there's just a little fucking, a little, you know, it, make, it makes the chicken, the, the, the villain look more chicken shitty because he's just doing like fucking two seconds. Uh, it, it's, it's going back to that Barry Horowitz sly heat from earlier as well you know um there's that chin lock again like they did in the first rockers match where sean fights out of it there's a cut off he he fought out of it just a little bit and then there was a cut off um i've put just heat just to the maximum do you know like they're waiting till the fucking heat's just right before he gets out of this fucking chin lock um perfect example of crowd manipulation uh, beautiful hip toss from Ray, just a hip toss, but it's beautiful. He kind of goes down with Sean. Yeah. Um, like I said, the fucking simple things really get me. Uh, they do the face lock tag thing, you know, the front front face lock into the corner, fucking tag, blah blah blah. Um, at some point, the Rougeos end up going into each other. There's a hot tag. Uh, Martin Jocker in nails Ray off the apron. Like just like before when they nailed fucking Jacques off the apron, same story. Um, they, they grab Jimmy, who's on the apron, fucking mouthing off, nail him, boom, the place fucking pops. Then, uh, backslide Marty to Ray, uh, but Jacques distracts uh, both the referee and Marty. Marty off the ropes <clears throat> where Ray trips him. Then the megaphone comes in, just like he did before, but they don't get caught this time. Right. Uh, the referee takes the um, megaphone off Ray, uh, pushes <coughs> pushes Ray out the ring because he had the megaphone. Fuck you, you've got the megaphone, you've got to get out. Sean nails Jacques with the megaphone that was left in the ring. Oh, honestly, mate, 
fucking find it on the old Daily Motion later. Well, I'll be watching your Montreal with the two referees scratching my head. Watch <laughs> this. It will fucking take you to another level of tag wrestling. Fucking beautiful. I like, like I said, I've seen it before. I saw it. Like I've got the DVD of the... It's called Superstars of Wrestling. Is oddly the, the, the name of the tour of the, the London bit off Sky. But I suppose that's because Sky showed Superstars of Wrestling. So kind of just draws from the name, doesn't it? But it's amazing. Brilliant. Um, cool. It's a must watch. Uh, we're 50 minutes in. It's been a good one. Uh, uh, we're doing Rick Rude on Monday. Your pick. Yeah. My pick of the midgets on Wednesday. Your tag team for Friday? My tag team, I've gone with uh, the Natural Disasters. I don't think we'll be seeing any fucking sleep leaps and fucking abdominal stretches in that for them. But yeah, good people are, are the natural disasters. I've met them both, which was I'm pretty cool. Fan of them both. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Bosh, we'll see people Monday for Jacques, uh, no fucking Jacques and Raymond, for Rick Rude.